Today we're going to dig into quick shots and master shots for the Mavic 4 Pro and of course with the quick shots they've added rotate because of the rotating gimbal but there's a few quirks about it and there's a few things to get used to and in fact I had to try about three different locations to really understand its limitations and how to use it so let me show you what I mean. So we're back on our little road trip and uh, we're going down to the old nunnery today which is a beautiful location to capture all our quick shots and master shots. It's a lovely backdrop, so looking forward to getting out there. So here we are, we've just set up the drone and uh, we've got the old nunnery, uh, as you can see over here, a nice little backdrop. So uh, I'm just gonna set the controller up first so you can see we're in video mode and then let's go to the three dots at the top and I'm in camera and I just want to check the settings here. So we're gonna start off in normal uh, for the quick shots and then I'm gonna do some in D-log as well. Uh, on other drones, I've noticed in the normal uh, mode, and you can see we've got D-Log and D-Log M. And when I put it onto D-Log, you can see just here, I've got color display assist. That means on the controller, it'll give me true lifelike colors, but the actual footage I'm recording is in a D-Log and that will be the same with D-Log M. So I'm gonna try both those settings and we can do a little comparison afterwards. I'm going to take video subtitles off. This creates extra extra files of information like SRT files, uh, which for um, some other software that is quite useful. For this, we don't need these extra files for general use. And then just go over to safety. And uh, I like to keep it on break because uh, I don't want any risk of dodging in and out of small branches. Or of quite a few large trees around here so we need to keep an eye on that as well. So we'll just go to the icon on the right where we'll see video and we'll just drop down to the quick shot setting. Now we have this new rotate mode here and we'll just use that to start with and I'm just going to double check. We're going to start in normal mode. One. Let's try that in a D log. Three, two, one. So you can see it rotates upside down, does its maneuver, and then we'll try this in D log M. Now you can see it's tilting upside down. Then we'll try the HLG. Okay. So I'll give it a bit more height to see if the drone still does this flip up and down, up and down, up and down. No, it's a lot smoother now. So it didn't like doing it low to the ground. As you could see, it was quite difficult to do some of those shots in that location. So I'm just gonna try it uh, in this location over here. I'm actually on a job. It's um, a big construction site. It's got a big tin hat on it. Um, we've got to do some video recording of that uh, to look at the site progression over the months to come. Also that uh, quick shot roll as well, I think, you know, to give it more distance from its subject. So let's just uh, do those two uh, with the drone here and see how that looks. So first of all, let's just go into our quick shots. And we've got rotate selected straight away there. I would like to be able to see if I could tilt down. I just can't see that we're gonna get that option here. So let's tilt the drone down now and we can actually fly this backwards. And let's try the full 360. So 
So we just moved to a different location now just to show you a couple of other um, features to the quick shots that we can dive into and also try and get a, a better shot with that um, gimbal rotation because uh, as you can see we've tried it high up on a, a property commercial job and it, it, I don't think it really worked the best for that scenario uh, so uh, and then obviously we've discovered we need quite a bit of space so this is an ideal um, place it's big open and wide so we're just going to get the drone in the air and uh, do some of those maneuvers so let's just go into our quick shots and we've got rotate and as you can see um, if we look at the bottom we've got different options here so we're going to do the forward and then uh, we're going to try uh, less rotation so we do the 40 degree either way click the tick box um, and the rotation we'll do the minimum and you can see the flight speed as well so at the moment we've just got that on the maximum so I'm going to push the drone back a bit more and then we just set that into action so here Three, we go two, one. so as you can see it hasn't tilted as much As you can see, we'll click um, backwards, we can do this, and then we can do 360 to zero, uh, and this time we'll drop the speed down to four meters per second. Let me just get an idea how that is. So it's 40 meters in front of the takeoff point. And you can see on the dial on the screen it gives an indication of the rotation. Okay, it still needed a lot of space that's 100 meters back and I've had to stop it from hitting those trees. Uh, and then looking at the droney. Now we've got distance. So as you can see, 30 meters right up to 100 meters. So let's try that. What can we go up to? 120 meters. Okay, let's do that since we've got the space. One. It's going to be particularly nice because we get the reveal shot here. So it's nice that we can put these different adjustments in according to our environment. Now, interestingly, it's very windy today and this is coping extremely well. The base wind's only 18, but they're forecasting in the high 20s right so now we've got the rocket now again you can see altitude here so we can now try some options for example 80 meters Three, so we get more of a, a dynamic example here i think this shot might be nicer if i was actually sailing a boat around a tropical island circle Select ourselves again and then it gives us right or left direction. So now with the circle I'm not getting any options to have it farther or closer. It's just where I put it, it will do the circle. Now Helix, that is giving us a choice of radius. So again since we've got the space Let's give it a hundred meters and click. Three, two, okay. So 
So we're going round and up. I'm guessing it's going to be a bit more dynamic because it's going to be pushing out further. So you're going to see the contrast more. It's that far out. It's uh, gone on to a location lock rather than identifying me. Well, that's nice actually, because now we get a little shot of the lake. Boomerang, select ourselves. And again, it looks like we've just got direction. Three, so let's two, do it that. So clearly where we place it is its starting point. It's going to do this out and return loop and it will gain height as it goes away. Mimicking you throwing a boomerang. Go figure. <laughs> And obviously being in a big open field like this, it's not going to be the best content, the best visual, but it's a nice clear open space to practice, to try these different maneuvers. And I suggest when you first get out and go through these, you do the same, get used to its characteristics, uh, and then you know when you're in close proximity to things, what its capabilities are and restrictions. Finally, asteroid. Three, two, and again, no one. parameters that we can change for the asteroid. No, it won't matter whether you're in uh, D log, D log M, HLG, because this will stitch this together and it will just uh, do its own color correction, which can be a little bit DJI over processed, but you'll see what I mean. Yeah, let's take a series of photos. Now, at the moment, I've just shown you on the wide angle, but of course you can do these with the medium telephoto lens. It doesn't give you the option to do it with the, uh, the long telephoto. Uh, cracking day right now for this shot, though. That's going to look pretty. Okay, so we're just going to roll into master shots now. And again, we'll highlight ourselves. And you can see here, it says estimated time, two minutes. You just click that. You can do uh, some varying options here um, where your start point is. Aircraft automatically adjusts current aircraft location. Height, this is medium height. Uh, we can go large. We've got the space, let's do it. The length, let's go large. And the width, uh, let's go small. Let's see how that works out for us. Three, two, one. Adjusting aircraft position. Okay, so this has come in nice and close. I like this. Drifting back with it zoom out, liking that it does it physically. Circle medium. But just to know, it actually does a medium and rise up. And this is circle close. It just seems to always go the opposite direction. It's actually no closer. It just stays the same distance from you. Uh, Drony. So I think we're going to get quite a big drone shot from this because of the settings we put in. A far circle. So that I think is going to be the money shot because that is looking really nice. With the lake in the background. A pitch up and fly forward for this circumstances this is probably going to look really nice with the lake behind us. Boom. Uh, I'm not sure I really got the lake. It's come quite close though, I like that. Rocket. 
So when it did that width, that was quite close. Camera down in a circle, always good for a property shot. Camera straight and descend. It'd be nice if it had done that looking at the lake, but hey ho. Camera down, descend. Hello. Well, I hope you've learned from my experimentation there so that you can dig into using all those features to the best advantage. Now for more videos on the Mavic 4 Pro, there's a playlist over here. Please show me the love and subscribe to the channel by clicking up here and I look forward to seeing you over there.